Hey guys, Nick here with another Synaptic Sound FL Studio tutorial. And um, this is kind of a uh, on-the-fly tutorial. I was just making some music and I came across something really cool um, as I was mixing some vocal chops. And uh, I'll show you what it sounds like. It'll probably be better than going ahead and describing it with words. So um, this is what my drum loop sounds like with my vocal chops that I just made. So you can see we've got, you know, your regular house drums, um, kick, hi-hat, snares, and claps, and all that. Then I went ahead and added in some vocal chops. Um, which I kind of did on the fly. I was kind of experimenting with uh, some vocal samples that I found on Splice. And um, we'll isolate those so you can kind of hear that again. So it gives a really nice, um, clean kind of vocal chop sound and uh, I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing I did was I went into Splice, which is over here. If you don't have Splice, this will work um, with other vocal samples too. But um, I went ahead and I chose a kind of a longer vocal sample. Um, it was like a chorus or a verse um, female vocals and that gave me a lot to work with when I was doing my chops so um, if you do go ahead uh, and do that and you want to pick a longer sample with lots of um, different kind of sounds and tones to work with and uh, that'll give you the most flexibility so um, I got that loaded up in Edison over here. And you can see it's a pretty long vocal sample. And it's in C sharp minor. So what I did was I went through and selected um, small pieces of the sample and then played them back. <laughs> until I found something that I thought was interesting sounding or that I liked. Um, so you're going to want to go into your grid snap settings and do snap to grid. And you can go through and choose a couple of interesting sounding noises. Sounds kind of cool. So once you've highlighted something that you like, just click this button here and drag into the um, step sequencer here. And now that little piece is its own channel and you can program it with um, steps in the step sequencer along with your drums. So there it is. Now I also normalized it. And you can reverse it, um, give you some different interesting sounds. And then um, sometimes you'll get some popping when you do this. Um, that's because you're uh, starting the sample at a non-zero amplitude, waveform amplitude. So what you're going to have to do is go into here. Under volume envelope, turn that on, and then set your attack time very, very tiny amount like that. You can even go right click and then click set and use a small knob, it gives you a kind of a finer tune adjustment and like 0.2 for your attack time. That'll get rid of any popping and um, clicks that are happening because of the chop. So once you've got that, 
um, there's another setting that you can change and that's the mode here the time stretching mode instead of going from to resample go to stretch and I'll show you what that does so we'll we'll do resample first and you can actually play chords with these chops which is really cool but um, I think stretch sounds better than resample um, I can't really explain in words so I'll, I'll show you the difference here So that's with a resample. Let's go to stretch. So I think what this is doing is making every single note um, in the chord an equal length, basically. Because um, when you uh, shift the pitch of the sample, it changes the length of the sample um, and if it's in stretch mode then they're all the same length so it lines things up and it makes things sound really clean okay so got those going and now um, you can go ahead and set up um, your steps in the step sequencer so I think I had it on, yeah, it was 15. And I got some other stuff going on here, but um, we'll just stick with the step sequencer stuff for now. So you can go ahead and kind of um, go through and trial and error and basically figure out what sounds good. So, um, another thing you can do is change the pitch. Uh, you want to make sure your sample is in tune with the scale of your song. And usually you can kind of do this by ear. Um, I usually start with a range of one and then go plus or minus until it sounds kind of harmonic with the rest of the, uh, the samples and the rest of the track. Okay, so I think I liked it better without that. Um, that was kind of more for a demonstration. But um, the last thing I wanted to show you was what I did with this one here. And like I said earlier, you can actually make chords out of this uh, sample. And that's exactly what I did with this one. So you can see in the, you can see in the piano roll um, rather than just having it on the root note, I've got the, an entire chord going on here. So that's another thing you can kind of do to make things sound a little more interesting. And the last thing I want to show you is the... Um, cut and buy so this is where you program the step sequencer to um, uh, basically chop samples so if two samples are being played basically at the same time it'll give one um, precedence over the other so what that means if this sample plays and it kind of drags out and then um, you know this sample plays it'll cut it off and uh, you know basically um, that's what this cut and buy does I'm not very good at explaining that but <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so you can do cut itself. So what that does is the sample will basically um, play over itself. So if you play a bunch in a row and do cut self. Solo it. So that's with uh, cut itself. Oh, whoops, I screwed something up. There we go. So now every time the other one, uh, the next one is triggered, the previous one gets cut off, basically, is what it does. So you can do that to kind of give it a, a little bit more of an interesting sound. Um, anyways, that uh, wraps it up for this one. Um, just thought it was something really cool and wanted to share with you guys. Um, yeah, that's it. We'll catch you next time.